Hello, my name is Sydney. Welcome or welcome back. In today's video, I'll be analyzing my personal statement with the tips that I mentioned in my previous video. I'm a pretty open book when it comes to being pre-med. I share a lot of my struggles as well as my candid thoughts here. If you find this video helpful, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. But before we start, I just like to say my personal statement is by no means perfect, but it is in fact personal. This is my reason for why I want to pursue medicine and I hope by sharing it helps you reflect and piece together yours. I just ask that you are respectful and mindful of my story since it means a lot to me. As always, time stamps of my writing process be in the description below. Without further ado, let's begin. How I approach the personal statement. First and foremost, I'd say the most important part of the personal statement, identify your why. Things that could help you identify your why. I'm gonna share some context since I think that'll help kind of understand my story a little bit better. For some background, I am a second generation Vietnamese American. Growing up, I didn't experience it firsthand, but I saw a lot of the difficulties inherent in navigating healthcare and just life in general from an immigrant perspective. Through my community service involvements, I became passionate about not only addressing these difficulties, but also working to bridge those financial, cultural, and linguistic barriers to access to care. So my goal or my why is to to practice cultural competent care for the underserved communities. And that falls under the specialty umbrella of community medicine and primary care. After identifying your why, my second tip would be to craft your story. And I'll actually split this part into different sections. The first section would be to engage in introspection. In order to do so, I would recommend revisiting your past, present, and future. For the past, um, Hi, I'm about to tell you a lot about myself, but I lost my dad to neuroendocrine cancer at a very young age, but it was from that moment, especially in kind of how our family is structured, that I stepped into a caretaker role. Specifically, I became more invested in taking care of my paternal grandma, and I wholeheartedly wanted to take care of her as my dad would have if he was still here. In terms of present introspection, I am passionate about serving the community that I personally feel had a hand in raising me. I'm also very passionate about my Vietnamese culture. As a result, right now in my gap year, trying to increase my speaking fluency and eventually learn Spanish as well as a skill set to help future patients. When I think about my future, the type of doctor I want to be is one that pushes healthcare to be more equitable to increase access for all. I personally believe that we can do that by equipping healthcare providers with the tools to understand these populations better, whether that falls under language or cultural competency. The ultimate goal is to create foundations that foster success since I believe health is all-encompassing and that's my personal avenue in medicine, but by bridging these disparities by incorporating financial literacy, food security, preventative health education, and just educational attainment, I feel like as a community, that's how we best take care of all aspects of the community. The next part of crafting your story with your most meaningful involvements or interactions, identify the areas of intersection. Do these moments share common qualities that showcase your theme for pursuing medicine? So my theme or my ultimate purpose of this personal statement was to showcase my pull to community medicine. I had a jolly old time listing all of my involvements. Man, I'm really bad at sarcasm. But yeah, I did it. I did the thing and I had my list. Of this list, these are the involvements that stood out to me and made the personal statement cut if you will. I'll be reading it off my laptop just for ease. The stories that I chose to incorporate in my personal statement were my grandma's first ER scare, the time I was a bilingual registered behavior technician for a child with autism. I also talked about my patient pen pal experience. For some context we would just exchange letters on a monthly basis and the main thing that we bonded over was our respective experiences as second generation Vietnamese Americans. I also mentioned a moment I had when I did a hospital discharge but this one was a little bit different from the standard hospital discharge. For context, basically I got paged as a hospital volunteer to meet a patient and then wheel them out to the front where their ride would eventually pick them up. But this situation was a little bit different since I did the normal routine, but I just noticed that his ride wasn't showing up. So I kind of took it upon myself just to kind of figure out who should I call? Has anyone been called for him yet? And the kicker in this situation was the patient didn't speak English and I didn't speak Spanish. Or I just had very rudimentary Spanish from high school that 
I didn't retain the whole experience in itself. I probably spent four hours with him just keeping him company. I eventually bought him lunch and fed him too since he couldn't move and feed himself. This moment helped me see that within myself, regardless of the circumstance, I have no qualms or no hesitations to try to be there for someone and help them. The last story I wanted to incorporate is when I was the community health fair coordinator for one of my most prized organizations called Vietnamese Community Health. The main goal of that organization was to host free community health fairs for people who did not have regular access to care. We would bring together community members such as physicians, grad students, dentists, chiropractors, acupuncturists just to offer these services and screenings to these patients free of charge. When I look at all my involvements to identify the areas of intersection, I find that the themes of culture reappear time and time again and that translates to me wanting to have a greater cultural awareness when I one day practice in the future. The theme of communication is also making its way downtown. Walking fat, no. Um, <laughs> communication also reappears. What I mean by that is I really enjoy being in those situations where I can alleviate feelings of fear or just uncertainty by being there for people and communicating with them, especially during their most vulnerable times. The last area of intersection that I found was a sense of education or empowerment. The way I mirrored that was either by being a translator or by providing preventative services or avenues for people to not only understand their health, but to have that understanding as a way for them to feel more in control of their health. Next step, I would say, would be to develop your narrative. With your stories, use that to establish and reinforce your theme in an order that makes sense. Three, write the personal statement. My first tip for this would just be to have a mind spew. write 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 fall in love with the process of writing i kind of grew up not liking writing a lot i was pained thinking i was a bad writer all in college i remember this vividly being the scared premium that i was about not getting a good grade in the class i actually went to this person's office hour every single one because he kept on giving me c's and lower on my essays but i remember just trying to have a heart to heart with him saying like hey i'm trying my best and i really am taking your feedback but i'm struggling a lot in my past writing ge's i've actually managed to get a's so it's just very hard for me to feel like my work that i'm giving now is decal and homeboy, TA, the homeboy hit me with a, what really? You've gotten A's before? So yeah, thank you for making me feel like a poopy writer. But when I started my gap year, I wanted to challenge myself to appreciate writing and not view it as the enemy. To get me to write, I actually employed a lot of different ways for me to get excited about it. By having these concentrated sessions where I did write and just pour out my thoughts fresh in the moment, these actually were little golden nuggets that I could eventually disperse in my personal statement or even my secondaries. For example, on Instagram, I wrote a lot of captions about my Vietnamese involvement. Lo and behold, a lot of them showed up in my secondaries. Secondly, when I was in correspondence with a doctor that I asked for his feedback on my personal statement, he hit me with the why community medicine. It forced me to eloquently write my reasoning out. I need to thank him because literally how I phrased that was in every single secondary that I sent out. So thanks doc, you the best. This was the biggest game changer that got me to be really creative with my writing, kind of see it as an art and not so much a task. At the start of my gap year, I actually started a blog. It was supposed to be just a pre-med medical blog but I went through a breakup and it was pretty hard. I kind of depleted my friend's patients who no longer wanted to hear me talk about it. So I actually processed a lot of how I was feeling throughout that breakup on that blog. And by doing so, I really got to know who I was as a person and also find my voice as a writer. Highly encourage if you're starting your gap year, if you have some time before applying, have some form to keep you accountable to write, but write like you mean it if that makes sense. The second part of writing your personal statement, structure your essay. The way I kind of approach this For the introduction, my personal story, I included the story of my grandma. As for theme, that's where I introduced my big why. For narrative, the stories I weaved in are the ones that I mentioned earlier. My micro level interactions involve me being an RBT, my hospital discharge, as well as being a pen pal. For macro level interactions, which kind of gives a glimpse of what I want to do in the future, this is where I mentioned being a health fair coordinator for Vietnamese community health. And as a nice conclusion, I summed up all the points that I mentioned earlier earlier and my mic drop moment. Just use that quote that I mentioned earlier but I tweaked it just for that ooh, 
moment. For writing technicalities, this more so falls in your style of writing, which you can kind of get a sense of once I read my personal statement later. Four, seek feedback. I would recommend seeking feedback and being open to constructive criticism from For seeking feedback, I didn't follow my advice to a T, but I did hit some of the people that I wanted to make sure read my personal statement. I'll preface by saying I didn't realize because I just kind of saw this as like a creative writing piece that really signified who I was as a person. My friend who read it told me that I took a very unconventional approach, which I don't know is a good or a bad thing. Personally, I'm really proud of my personal statement, so I'm going to think he complimented me and just flip my hair as such. But of the people I asked to read over my personal statement, I don't know, when I sought feedback, I didn't want to just give out my personal statement for the sake of just giving it out and feeling like, ooh, I'm getting more people to read it, more eyes on it. I knew who knew my story best and whose opinions I ultimately valued most. I shared my personal statement with my brother, Kevin, who knows me like the back of his unmoisturized, dry ass, crackly hand. Oh, that was pretty aggressive. <laughs> I also shared it with one of my closest friends. Her name is Hannah. She's a beautiful writer and I really respect how she conveys herself and her purpose. In terms of a strong writer and a successful applicant, I two birds, one stone that. And I asked my friend Kevin, one of my high school buds, and he applied the year before I did. He was admitted into a great MD PhD program and is also a very strong writer. I was connected to a doctor who was on past medical school admissions committees, so I had him read my personal statement and that actually is a doctor who pushed me to become really firm and direct with why I wanted to do community medicine. That concludes everything I wanted to discuss in today's video. If you have any questions or any topic requests for future videos, please leave it in the comments below or let me know by sending me a personal message through my Instagram. The writing process is an intimidating one to start, but just remember momentum will pick up and as it does, it really transforms to something that's beautiful, something that you should be proud of because it stands as a culmination of everything that you have done to get to this point today, where you're one step closer to pursuing your dream of being a doctor. On that cheese ball note, best of luck crafting your stories. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you next time. Bye. Ew, that was kind of flummy.